Thanks for watching How to Build a Motorcycle Frame Part 1. You can find Part 2 at our YouTube channel and at customchoppersguide.com. In this video, we're going to discuss the basics of how to build a motorcycle frame. We're going to discuss the basics of how to build a, a chopper style frame, and by the end of Part 2, you'll be able to talk intelligently about how chopper frames are built, how motorcycle frames are built, of course, and you'll have enough confidence to move forward if that's what you want to do. Now, keep in mind that this video is not a Steven Spielberg production. I'm not a professional speaker, and I'm going to be reading from material that uh, we created here at customchoppersguide.com. So if I stutter or sound like I'm reading, I apologize. I'm just not a professional at that, but I think you'll find the information extremely valuable. Here's an example of a ground-up build, a first-time ground-up build by Paul Crowley. He's one of our subscribers at customchoppersguide.com. And you can see this along with many, many other builds and customizations at customchoppersguide.com, including pro builders' work. So when it comes to building a motorcycle frame or a chopper frame, two questions come up. Is it cheap and is it easy? Is it cheap? Well, yes and no. As far as the frame is concerned, the raw materials cost around $100. After all, it's just some bits of steel, but you'll need some equipment to build the thing, and that's going to cost more. If you know someone with all the gear who will let you use it and you count your time as free, then building a frame can cost 100 bucks or so, if you make no mistakes, which is unlikely if it's your first time. Is it easy? Well, that depends on what you mean by easy. If you have a lot of experience working with metal, are a pretty decent welder, and love measuring things, then I suppose it could be thought of as easy. Like so many things in life, the theory is easy, the practice is much harder. Here's another example of a ground-up build by a group of high school students through BMHS Bike Club. It's a nonprofit organization, and you can read more about their story at customchoppersguide.com. They won uh, first place in a uh, fairly large custom building show, and I encourage you to read that. It's uh, quite a story. So what we'll discuss in this video in part one is naming the frame. I know that sounds kind of boring, but um, if this is one of your first projects and you're just doing some research on building a motorcycle frame or a chopper frame, I think you'll find it more than interesting. And in part two, it gets even more detailed. Um, part one and part two, if you're a veteran builder, you're going to find it kind of a rehash, but I think you'll find the material refreshing or call it a refresher course. So a little advice. From the start, be realistic about what you can do. Don't set out expecting to build the world's finest looking, best performing chopper on your first attempt. The truth is that constructing anything that works is something a first time builder should be really, really proud of. Remember, this is serious stuff. You're going to build a bike someday that you'll be riding. Here's another example of basically a ground up build. This is a show winning XS400 chopper. It was built on a budget, and you can read about this guy's story at customchoppersguide.com. He beat out some top flight professional builders who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on their projects, and uh, he only spent a few thousand at best. Naming the frame. Most people reading this will know this part pretty well, or I should say most people watching this video. Here's a two-dimensional diagram of a rigid frame, the simplest type to build. The parts made of tubing that make up this special shape of each bike are the wishbone tubes that run along the top and the back of the bike. These two tubes are bent to make space for the seat. They get welded together and then to the top tube at one end and the bottom rails. This is on a rigid frame, of course. On a swing arm, you weld them to the side plates. When the two pieces that make up the wishbone tubes are welded together, they are shaped like a wishbone. The top tube or backbone runs from the wishbone tubes to the next stem and is welded to both. The pair of bottom rails have the most serious bending and are welded to the next stem at the front and the wishbone tubes at the rear, or side plates if you are building a swing arm frame. The down tubes are just one part of the bottom rails, the section that comes between the next stem and the first big bend. The center post or seat post is just a tube welded to the backbone and a cross brace that runs between the two bottom rails. It's, it's there to make the frame more rigid, and it's worth noting that not all designs include one. If this is the case, they clearly need to gain extra rigidity from elsewhere. As you can see on the picture on the lower left, 
That's one of our designs at customchoppersguide.com without a center post. You can uh, get plans for that as well as many, many others at our, on our website. So here's a top view of the frame in the previous picture. And you can see that the wishbone is very obvious. There are usually three parts around the neck. The neck stem is the tube where the frame connects to the forks. It's machined steel and will be fitted with bearings of some kind so it can support the front end of the bike. Because it has this vital role, there are two further parts that help out by adding strength. The neck gusset tube is a tube welded to the, both the backbone and the bottom rails. The neck gusset is a flat piece of steel that connects all of this together, adding strength. The neck gusset is usually welded to everything in sight, the backbone, neck stem, neck gusset tube, and the bottom rails. There are many variations on this theme. Many frames have no gusset, but do have struts between the down tube and the neck stem, for example. So that's it for the basics of the frame. Now we need to think about how we're going to secure the engine, transmission, rear wheel, and gas tank to the frame. When we plan and build the frame, we need to put thought into these few other essentials known collectively as the mountings. The engine is fastened in place by the top motor mount bracket or engine mount, a heavy steel bracket which is welded to the backbone. In this diagram, it is roughly halfway between the tank clips and the seat clips, hanging down with a bolt hole drilled in it. And also by two motor mounting plates or engine mounts on which the motor will sit. All three are labeled engine mounts in, the, in this illustration here. The motor is bolted to these mounting plates. There is a standard engine bolting pattern, so the engine is secured at three separate points, one or two of which are large machined pre-drilled steel plates. It's cheap and easy to buy the motor mounting plates to suit the engine you choose. The forward control adapters are threaded lugs to which the forward controls will be fitted. They sit by the forward motor mounting. The gas tank is held by the well-named gas tank mounting and tank clips. On this illustration, I've only shown the tank clips because most often the mounting is fabricated using the gas tank as a guide later on in the assembly. It's usually a small flat plate that matches the bolt holes in the tank, which is welded to a mitered tube that you measure and this is then welded to the frame. This way the gas tank fits snugly and can be removed by using the bolts. The tank clips that are shown sit between the two halves of the assembled tank and the ridge that runs through the center at the bottom of the tank. Towards the back of the bottom rails behind the center post we mount the transmission plate and bolt the transmission to it. The plate itself can be welded to the frame or bolted and again can easy, easily be bought ready machined for your choice of transmission. Finally, there needs to be a seat clip, which will be fixed to the top of the wishbone tubes somewhere in front of the center post and onto which the seat clips. Obviously, you need to know that what seat you're going to be using before fitting this, and it can be left until late later on, but uh, usually before painting. So a word about swing arms. Here we are concentrating on rigid frames, but it is possible to build a swing arm frame. The swing arm is the rear portion of the frame and is used to hold the rear wheel in place and allow for movement as part of the rear suspension system. It is attached to the frame on a pivot axle and needs a suspension system bolted between the frame and swing arm to limit the movement of the swing arm. Swing arms can be bought made up, in which case you can fabricate a frame to fit it. Such a frame will look similar to those in this image, but will not extend to the rear axle, but rather will have a half diamond shaped rear portion to accommodate the diamond shaped swing arm section. Okay, so that's it for part one of this video series. Part two, we're going to cover frame geometry, stretching, and rake and trail.